Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Thursday of the 29th week in Ordinary Time, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valliere. Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 through 53. And let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Our glory belongs to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. All praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. In today's gospel reading, according to St. Luke, we have some pretty passionate and disturbing words from Jesus today. First, he expresses his deep desire to cast fire on the earth. You know, in the imagery of the Old Testament, fire is a symbol of God's powerful presence. Secondly, He expresses a longing for his baptism to be accomplished. And baptism here really refers to his immersion in the terrible suffering and death by which we will all be liberated, in which he must endure. In fact, the ritual of baptism where the person to be baptized was immersed in the baptismal pool was seen as a parallel to Jesus going down into death and emerging to new life in the resurrection. Thirdly, Jesus says that he has come not to bring peace, but division on the earth. You know, at first, this is a hard saying and doesn't make any sense. You know, I thought Jesus was the Prince of Peace. Didn't Jesus say at the Last Supper, that he was giving his peace to his disciples, a peace that the world couldn't give and that no one could take away? Yes, but he also warned his disciples that after he was gone, they could expect a real rough ride, the breakup of families, father against mother, parents against children, in-laws against in-laws, were unfortunately only too common as one or more members in a family decided to follow Christ and be baptized. These must have been extremely painful experiences that no one really wanted. Jesus had warned that those who wanted to follow him had to be ready, if necessary, to leave home and family and enter into a new family of brothers and sisters. So following the way of truth and love, of freedom and justice, well, that will always arouse the hostility of those who may feel threatened by that type of goodness. 
But is it right to break up one's family, we might ask? Well, we might counter by asking, which is the more loving thing to do? To be true to one's convictions and integrity or to compromise them for merely external peace? You know, the one who leaves a family for the sake of Christ and the gospel shows a greater love for one's family and will never cease to love them, no matter how viciously they may react to the choice that the Christian has felt it necessary to make. In the long run, my brothers and sisters, truth and love will prevail. Even when families split up, they will prevail. Finally, hostility, division, and persecution, provided the Christian is not directly responsible, doesn't take away the peace that Jesus spoke about. To the contrary, it is only by being true to one's convictions and one's integrity, whatever the price that has to be paid, that peace can be experienced. All of this is something for each of us to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, reread this scripture passage again, contemplate its message, and concentrate on a thought that comes to you either through a verse or even just a small word that touches you, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him in friendship something that he deeply desires. And let us complete a divine reading now with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Governed by your Holy Spirit, we pray, O Lord, that those who contemplate and embrace your divine word, that professing you not just in word, but also in works and in spirit and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, and if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and help support our channel, and share these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day, and join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus, peace and blessings to all.